everybody, it's your girl Connie Kenneth and welcome back to my channel. I am so happy to know the Mokazi family and I'm so grateful, you know, to this family because they have never met me. They have showed me so much support, so much love. You know, when I featured Mokazi, you know, when he did the workout with Oslo, that, why do I always say Oslo? With uh, OC, the born child, <laughs> sorry, you know, being the Maasai and doing the Maasai workout. And I received so much love from, you know, their supporters and from them. And they look like a very, you know, beautiful people, welcoming. And honestly, this is a video that I want to do, not only because, um, not only because it's 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 good to educate people, you know, um, you know, especially with uh, endometriosis, but also just for me to say thank you so much for the support, you guys. I love you guys so much, and I promise you, when I come to Kenya, I will most definitely um, meet you guys, and I hope that it will be possible. I would love to come um, and meet you guys. So. Today's video, it's, you know, from Mokazi's family. So this is Mokazi's wife. And so she's going to talk to talk to us about her painful journey. Okay, so her story with the endometriosis story and the surgery that came along with it. So I wanted to find out what is this condition. So for those of you who don't know, and I have educated myself because I've heard about this um, you know, this problem, but I didn't really know anything more to it. So this is a condition where tissue similar to the lining of a womb starts to grow in other places, such as the ovaries and fallopian tubes. So it can affect women of any age. It's a long-term condition that can have a significant impact on your life. But there are treatments that can help, all right? So if you have, um, you know, pain in your lower tummy, period pain that, you know, that never stops and, you know, it's just very painful, uh, things like that, heavy periods, you should go and consult because it's okay to have um, pain during your period, but extreme pain, that could be one of the signals. And so that's, that's why people take time before going to see the GP, because actually you think it's just a menstrual period, but do not ignore those symptoms and just go and consult. So, you know, their solutions. So let's hear her story. And thank you so much for educating us and me. And thank you so much. So make sure you subscribe and let's get this one. When I was a young girl, I, I loved so much to be pregnant at mm. 25. I also loved to have a job by the time I'm 25. I also loved to have a boyfriend by then. But you know, uh, things don't happen the way you want. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, I, I will not, uh, this is a very long video. I will not break it down. Um, uh, I will not stop a lot. But yeah, it was my case as well. I, I It was my dream, my dream uh, to have my first child when I was 25. So I got my first child, I was 26. So I understand completely, um, you know, where you're coming from. And this is, um, this is a common thing among women because we want to grow at the same time as our children, you know, and yeah, so I understand. By the time I was 25, I didn't have a job. By the time I was 25, I didn't have a boyfriend by then. And by the time I was 25, I didn't have any kids. Mm -hmm. So I was so reluctant and a new life was there for me. So I had to take everything easy and realize that not everything you plan the way you want comes mm -hmm. easily unless God favors you on that. So back in 2016, I met my then husband. I'm so happy. Yo, guys, my dream has finally come true. I've got a husband. Now I'm planning to have a baby and I have a job that I wanted. So, yeah, and, and if my memory serves me right, I guess you met, uh, you guys met on Tinder because I saw your story and I, I love it. I think you guys uh, met on Tinder and uh, you moved in very fast or you met very fast uh, after that, I think three days later. And so your love story is such a beautiful story and love, you can find love anywhere and, um, and especially true love. And someone who will support you and, and, you know, be with you, especially during tough times, like, you know, the condition that you have undergone. So I hope everything is well now. We never pushed so hard on having a baby because, mm -hmm. you know, a baby is God's blessing. It's not comfortable. 
with me discussing anything to do with pregnancy with my husband. So it took me time. So the first month went on well, the second month went on well. But when it came to the third and fourth month of the same year when I met my husband, I felt something was not right somewhere. And I felt that I need to talk to him and get to know or as a couple, uh, get to understand each other and do things that they are meant to be done. So I spoke to my husband about it and he took an initiative to go to the Kaina. So um, my husband has again a friend who always went for checkup. So the first checkup was so good. Everything mm. was easy. The gainer was happy about us. He wished us well and told us he would be looking forward for us getting pregnant and bringing babies in this world. And for me, that was my first gainer thing I've ever done in my life. So I wished myself the best. I was ready psychologically. I was so prepared. Mm-hmm. And even my husband was prepared. So we were so excited on having our first baby. And everything went well. So I had to change my diet. I had to change my lifestyle. I had to change so many things. Yeah, that is very important because your body has to be in a good condition uh, to welcome a child. And especially when you have a, um, a tough time uh, falling pregnant, it's good to make sure that you know you eat healthy. You have a healthy lifestyle in general. And so I want to also highlight how important it is to have communication in a couple so you can talk you can should feel free to talk things with your significant other because if it's not the case then you just hold everything inside and it just destroys you from the inside so the best thing is when you're comfortable with someone enough to tell them what's really worrying you and so they can support you because you know they will support you the fact that if you need to be pregnant you need to have a very good body a very good strong immune and for me, I used to get sick so many times, and now this is the time now I felt that it's good that I watch what I eat, I do workout, I relax, and at least be very fit, you mm-hmm. know? When I say fit, not workout way, but fit in form of my body, that I can hold a baby and I carry the pregnancy for nine months. And that made me change my life a lot. I watched what I was eating what I was drinking, where I was going, what I was thinking in my mind. I wanted to be that sober person, carrying this uh, precious thing in my body. Mm. So months went on and things didn't turn the way I expected. So what happened? I went to, we went for a checkup. So uh, the first time uh, the doctor told us, or our gyna told us that we should go for a checkup. So we had an HSG. That show that our tubes are okay and our ovaries, our eggs are okay. But one thing I didn't know is on that same same time is when our doctor gave us a report saying that I got some fibroids. And I truly didn't understand much about it, but I knew or I've seen so many women suffer with fibroids. Mm-hmm. And I thought fibroid was one of the most serious things that women face for them. Or right. maybe not even getting pregnant. Yes, it's a common um, it's a common um, condition. Fibroids are like they're a very common condition among women. So we hear more about fibroids than endometriosis for some reason. I don't know why, but they're both very painful uh, conditions, you know, to undergo. And yeah, so oh my good, my dear, I am so so. Please let me know your name um, below um yeah so mm, oh you're such a strong woman and i'm so happy that you're telling me your story because you're going to touch other people with the same condition so they can know that it's possible to get out of it and just showing them your journey then they know that you know it just motivates them and shows them that they're not alone but i never knew there are other underlying issues that make someone not to be pregnant Mm -hmm. so we spoke with my husband about it and he told me he's going to support me fully, but uh, we have to do something. We have like to always go for checkups to know mm. the size of the fibroids and, and how we're going to eliminate them. So we were cool about it. So it would happen some sometimes. Like you all know about the effects of, or you all know how fibroids affect people. Uh, sometimes I would go and sleep and 
in the verge of the night i'll just have some sharp pains in me and i'll feel something flowing out mm. uh, i'll jump out of the bed but by the time i get to the toilet flow is everywhere i'm having uh, these sharp cramps mm. i'm having sharp menstrual even when menstrual is coming out i'm still feeling pain i'm feeling confused i feel sick i feel everything i felt as if the world was just tearing apart mm-hmm. but i never gave up because now my mind started telling me that i have fibroids this these are the causes of fibroids you know and <clears throat> i i turn i i i now, I thought of being more careful on myself and taking more care when it comes to hygiene-wise. And guys, all the time I had my periods, I felt as if the world is shutting down. Mm. Because and I was not... Yeah, and you know, now that you're talking about it, I know in high school, and it can happen at any age. I remember in high school, there was this girl, she had painful painful menstruals, painful ones. And we didn't really understand back in the days because we didn't have people like you who would, you know, explain, you know, the condition and give a testimony of what they've been undergoing and stuff like that. And I remember each time she had menstruals, she had to go to the nurse. Sometimes she, they had to call her parents because it was horrible pain. So, you know, now um, now that we know more about this uh, these conditions, then maybe I hope, you know, she's much better today. And, yeah, so, my goodness, cramps already are terrible. When you have period, it's terrible. So, if on top of that you have endotrimosis or the fibroids, mm, terrible. Not comfortable. Once working in the office was not so cool for me. Oh, yeah. I felt that the pain is too much. I was always scared. What if I mess on myself? What if I just stand and go somewhere or my boss sends me somewhere and my menses just mm. come out and making the whole thing look like a big issue wow. in front of men, you know? We are all scared of men. Mm-hmm. So I was so scared and I felt that as if I'm not wanted. Mm. So I kept complaining about Oh it. yeah, of course. It just um gets you, you know, to like, like have a low self esteem and fear, you know, constant fear. It's terrible. So when it came to time you know by that time now, truly I not hit my mind on hundred percent fibroids. So uh you know our doctor told our fibroids are too small. So we needed to overcome it by getting pregnant. Once we get pregnant, our my fibroids will go away because they're too small by then. Mm-hmm. So we worked so hard on that. So I tried all the best I could when I'm not having a period, when I'm activating, yeah, you know, these things. So when my period my when my once my periods kick in, I felt so bad because all the effort I've put, trying eating well, trying to keep healthy, doing workouts, you know, mm-hmm. all those things, and now boom, the month is here, it's end month, our visitors have, have just come in, and I'm not pregnant, it's also devastated, me. Right. It made me feel very bad, mm-hmm. so I would promise myself, let me work so hard next month, I'll be pregnant, so it kept on going like that, like yeah. that, like that, until I got to Maybe six months down the line, I started feeling that something is wrong somewhere. I felt it was a high time now I talked to my husband about it. So I would call my husband, maybe go out for some coffee and talk about it. He was so supportive, guys. Mm. He, made me, he gave me the support that I needed as a woman who was always there for me. And he helped me. He never felt as if my, my period to him was a bother because he saw the pain that I was going through. And he also saw what, how, how, he also saw that I was so willing to get pregnant. Mm. Uh, uh, and that is so important to have a supportive uh, partner. It's very important. And keep communicating because holding things inside does not help. It just eats you from the inside. And then when you remove it, then it's like just getting a load off your chest and, um, and yeah, so it's a good thing that he was supportive, but I'm not surprised because my dear, you have a, such a wonderful man and um, yeah, so it's only normal. And of course, psychologically, it's difficult when you're trying over and over. I have stories of people that I know that for years they couldn't have children and then, you know, because psychologically we torture ourselves because we want, we want things to happen 
and our timing but god's timing is the best and then so when they stopped torturing their minds then the babies came and yeah so do, do not lose hope and you know you know there's always um you know there's an issue at the end um you know we can see the light and so yeah uh, so he told me you know what babe you have to calm down let it happen from nowhere right. the day you get pregnant you will not even have work hard for- exactly what i'm saying and honestly i have seen with three people three people that i know personally for years tormenting themselves and blaming themselves and crying and and doing tests and tests and tests and then the day they thought to themselves that i will never have a child and now i have to concentrate on my career or adoption the babies came you know the babies came so the body has a way of reacting to situations that we don't we, we cannot control so if we just have to let mother nature unless it's a deeper problem but we need to let ma- things happen at the perfect time for it it will just come naturally just relax be free and everything will come mm-hmm. on its time god's time is always the oh, best yeah. and i stop thinking so much about it so life went on and you know two weeks down the line my period will come again so i get i got bored now that i can't even travel anywhere I can't even go to places, I can't even meet people, I can't eat certain foods like sugary stuff, you know, because I'll eat something sweet and it would trigger my periods to come. Mm. So I hated everything. Generally, I hated life. I just hated everything to do with marriage and I thought this is the pain people go through. Mm. Maybe uh, once you're married, no, these are lifestyle things that come in your body, but I never knew these things come to every woman who is active but not getting pregnant. So it went on like that until one day, one shocking day, uh, me and a colleague, we were going home. It was 5.30, we were leaving work and we were going home. So I told my colleague uh, to give me some time to go to the washroom, change myself, prepare myself so that we go home because I had my periods. So she told me, it's okay, fine, take your time and let's go. So I took my sweet time, I went to the washroom, uh, did my thing there and we went home, we took a... Uh, matatu and we went home my friend let me tell you if the car would hit a bump or a pothole everything was crumbling down i would feel my stomach get hot and i felt something was pushing down to like the floor was just coming out i was so praying so hard that i won't miss myself and i prayed so hard that i didn't even want to cough or even laugh because i knew my floor was so heavy so we got to the place where we were going. We alighted and now we wanted to take the next matter too. And until when the driver said, Madam, are you okay? I told him, yeah, I'm okay. And that day I'd worn a black trouser. So the driver asked me, because we were sitting in front, so the, the driver asked me, Madam, are you okay? I told him, yeah, I'm okay. Why? Is there any problem? He told me no, but I think uh, there is something happening to you. Once the guy told me that, definitely it rang in my mind that I'd messed up big time. I just checked on the seat, something on black. By good luck, the seats in that matter too, they were like paperish, you know, that you can wipe. So I looked at the seat and I saw I'd messed a little. So I, I told him, sorry, I'm going to clean it up. I took a wipe. I took some wipe I had, I wiped it out and told the guy, so he told me, it's okay, we understand these things, they do happen, you know, the first one. So on, when we arrived and the matatu left, I told this lady, you know what, I'm feeling so bad, I feel something is trying to push down, we need to go to the toilet, I need to get a washroom as up. So in the fact of checking around if there is any hotel or any place that has a public toilet, it took us time. By then, everything was flowing mm. out. I would feel, I would feel big chunks of meat flowing down me. And now, the trousers that I had worn, despite it being black, the flow was already on my leg, mm. on my shoes. I felt so disappointed. My colleague tensed up and she was like, no, what are we going to do? I told her, no, the only thing we have now is to get the toilet remove all whatever I have and change my pad. Guys, I tried all 
we could to look for the toilet, but we couldn't get. So uh, a few meters away, we saw a petrol station, and there was a um, is it a chicken? No, it's not a chicken inn. It's kind of a chicken inn. So we asked the guys there if they can help us with the keys for the washroom. They told us just go this way, you will see a washroom. That place was another tension. The tiles were white. Mm. So the more I walk, the more my lenses went on. Mm. Like, I would step and I would step by me. Oh my kid, I'm just like sitting here just listening to your story and thinking to myself how embarrassing that is, you know. After everything that you've been, you've gone through, and then that is a climax. That is the climate. And of course, people don't know you, so people always jump into conclusions. It's very easy for people to judge, thinking that you're a messy person, thinking that you don't even, you know, um, you could have changed earlier. You know, all those things, and and more more so, the tiles are white, and so everything. You just feel like the universe is against you. And you just want like the, the earth to open up so you can it can just swallow you or something. And thank God you were with your colleague who was there to help you through this ordeal because I think it was a it was a horrible ordeal for you. I I feel so sorry for you. Um but um on the other hand, I feel that the fact that you're talking about it, this is like your purpose in a way to educate young women because there are so many young women undergoing the same thing. They have no support. They don't know why it's happening to them. And so now with what you're teaching us, now we know, you know, I have a daughter. I know if something like that happens to her, then I will think about you and think about your journey and, you know, and so on. So thank you so much for sharing your story. Oh, it's, um, I love it. You know, like it would drip little by little. Mm -hmm. I felt so disgusted. But by good luck, it was in the evening, so most of the people had already okay. left, so they were not using that pathway. So I went to the toilet. When I tried undressing myself to change, still the floor was so heavy. My friend, it was so heavy. The chunk of meat that came out there was so heavy, and it was so, so painful. I cried. Mm. No, my friend outside, my colleague was telling me, are you okay? Are you sure you're okay? I told her, you know what? Now you have to get for me some tissue. We need to wipe this thing out. My handkerchief had already soaked. It was so miserable. My, my clothes, everything was mm. wet, you know? I felt bad about it, but no, I had otherwise. I told her, you know what? Take my phone and try call my husband. Maybe he'll come and mm -hmm. rescue us. So we tried calling him. We called, we called for almost 10 times, 20 times, you know? trying to call, trying to call, trying to call. I felt bad. I started crying. I asked myself, why is he not even picking up my phone? He knows I'm in this problem. Why is he not even responding? No, she told me, don't worry. You just keep on cleaning up yourself and I'll keep on calling him until he picks up. Mm -hmm. So we, as she is trying to pick, to call, I'm trying the other side to, to clean myself. So we cleaned myself. I used a whole roll. Do you know that those, uh, tissues that they're bought for a hundred shillings yeah. like, like the double or the mega big tissue yeah so i used that i wiped and made sure my trousers are dry so i could use the whole roll of tissue i just wiped my my pants so i wiped my pants i made sure I'm, my my legs are clean everything is clean i took some uh, more of my pads and I fixed myself, I was ready to go, but now the place looked messy. So I told this lady, we're not going to leave this place here, we have to clean it. Mm -hmm. So we hurriedly did it, we cleaned the place, and we went to stand outside, not at the stage. Once we were there, I was so worried, like, another flow is coming, because I felt my stomach becoming more hot. Mm -hmm. And I told my colleague, no, you know what, we have to rush home, or things will just happen. We didn't wait for him to come or to pick up the call. So we saw the next matter to end. We took the, the matter to home. So she gave me her sweater and her lesson. We put it on. I, I put it on my seat. I sat on them and we went home. So when I got, when we got to our final destination, she left. She went in a house. I told her, don't worry. I'll be fine from here. I'll just run home. Mm -hmm. Maku, it was getting late. It was at around seven. Yeah, it was around seven. So I took my 
I took my, I just stayed there. I called him and finally he picked up. I told him, you know what? I'm so in a mess. Can you come and pick me? I'm at this place. So my hubby came for me. I got home. The first thing, before even anything, I just went straight to shower. Right. I showered. Everything was so messed up. I took a quick shower and a hot shower. Yo, do you know what happened? After taking a shower and dressed properly and cleaned everything, my man finished. Just disappeared out of nowhere. Finished. You know, I told my husband, you know, I'm not going to work tomorrow. I need to ask my boss for permission. We have to go for a checkup. But this time, I don't want to go to the same gainer. I want to go to a different gainer. Let's try an option B or C. Yes, exactly. And that's very important to uh, to get to two or three, you know, uh, consultations because you never know. One person must have missed out on a detail that maybe a second specialist will point a finger on. So it's very important to have like different opinions from different specialists. He said, okay, fine, let's try it. So uh, I called a few friends of mine and told me, Pauline, do you know there's a certain gain I want you to try? Uh, maybe it's going to give you the best option. I told, him, it's okay. I told them it's okay. So I went to the option B. Uh, I did a scan and everything. They saw everything. And that time, we are still with my husband. He was still there for me. So we went. Uh, I was done some scans. And I went some, you know, the scans. And I was asked some questions, you know, about mm-hmm. myself, about my health, about everything. I gave him the response. And I, he told me, you know what? Uh, now you guys, uh, if you have fibroids, you need to do, uh, you have to do some HS gene. To see even if your your tubes and your eggs are okay, say so, okay, fine, mm-hmm. you're open for it. But deep down in myself, I didn't want that because the last time it was so painful for me to find one. So when we went to the guy, I asked my husband, Baby, you promise me you're not going to take me to the same same process. He told she, and you know what he told me? Uh, you know what, babe, I love you so much. I would love you to have what you want. I would love you to have a baby that you always want, but. If you don't undergo this process, mm. so you don't go and undergo his medication. Exactly, and he's so right because he, as I know, I, I I I understand, and I think he understood at that point that um, as much as I mean, as much painful as it was, but then he, you had to undergo that for the doctors, for the gyna to know where the problem is coming from. Because there is no way the gyna can treat, you know, can treat someone without getting to the bottom of the problem. Because you need to cut the problem from the root, you know. So um, so he was so supportive and just calm about it and telling you. And it makes sense completely. As much as I love you, but I love you enough to, you know, to, to make you undergo such a painful experience again. But it's for your own good because after this will come up with a solution. So he comforted you. And that is so, I mean, so much respect for you, sir. Honestly, it's um, a great thing. Mm-hmm. Let's do this. So we did some scans and the results, we were told we wait for the result. Like after two days, they'll call us. And fast forward, two days are here. Mm-hmm. The gainer called us and told us, you know what, uh, the only option now we have for you left is you have to undergo a surgery. And the surgery you're going to do is going to remove the fibroids, mm-hmm. to remove the fibroids, and you're going to check if your tubes, they're okay. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, anything, doctor, you say, anything mm-hmm. you say, I'm in for it. Mm-hmm. So my husband also said, if she's okay with it, then I'm okay with it, I have no problem. So... We agreed. So uh, the gainer told us, no, for this month, you're going to wait. When you're on the second day of your period next month, can we come so that we know what you're going to do? And I'm like, okay, cool. I went home, so I knew I have fibroids, and I, I knew now, at the back of my mind, I knew that I'm undergoing some surgery to remove the fibroids mm-hmm. and to open the tubes if they are blocked. So I just took my sweet time. Everything was okay. I carried myself well, 
I, I, I watched what I was eating, my diet and everything. And the day came. But the next month, on my second day of my period, as the gyna said, I just went back to the hospital. So my husband picked me up at work. We went to the gyna and we were told that uh, on this day is the only available day. We have to do it as up. We have to do this surgery as up. It's going to truly, truly help you. Mm-hmm. And it's going to avoid all these pains that you're feeling, this flow and everything. And I was like, okay, fine. I was ready for the surgery, but in myself, I was so scared. Right. Nice. Of course, nothing is um, exciting about a surgery. <laughs> nothing is. Because any surgery is risky. Be it a minor one, a major one, you never know. So it only it's normal. It's normal to feel like that. I hate blood. So I was so scared, but I just accepted. Uh, so we were given some document we filled in the mode of payment. Are we going to use insurance? Are we going to pay? Are we mm. going to have NHF? All that stuff. So we paid the mode of payment and everything. So the documents that were needed for payment, we prepared them on time. So we prepared, we had our, like a week to prepare okay. on the documents and our payments and everything. So we prepared and the gainer told us, see, uh, let me see you on the, the day before you surgery and I said it's cool so on 24th of 2016 we went back to the doctor uh, and this time around we were going there to pick a certain pill there's a pill that we were given that I would swallow to clear my 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 okay. uh, to clear the past mm-hmm. the passwords the you know the food in my body and everything mm-hmm. so I was given that pill to clear all everything that is in my system yeah. And I was told not to eat. And that same same day we signed it. You know, surgeries are surgeries. You may come out alive or dead, you know. So we signed it. We never told anyone. On my family side, we never told anyone. On even on his side, we never told. So it was just a secret between me and him. You're going to do this and you're not going to share it with anyone. This is our life, we need to sort it as it is. So we went signed the document. I, he accepted I should undergo the surgery or in case of anything, any, 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 all those details, we did it. So Regina told us, see you tomorrow. And I'm like, okay, I'm cool. So the next day on 25th of 2016, you guys are just celebrating Christmas. I was on the theater undergoing a surgery. So I was scheduled to have my surgery at around 8 in the morning. But when we got there, uh, it happened that the gainer was so, like, you know, if you're told you're having a surgery at 8 and you go and find that the gainer is not finished with the last, you have to wait. So we waited, but the nurse came, prepared me, gave me, tried speaking to me, you know. Uh, when she was going through my documents, she knew what I'm undergoing, you know, she knew what I was going for the mm-hmm. surgery, the reason why I'm going for the surgery, she knew everything, and I was okay with it, I never even tensed or even bothered to ask, because I also knew what I was going there to do, so she prepared, uh, she gave me clothes to change, she told me what to do, and for that time, I was on my last days of, of my floor, and I felt so disgusting that she was telling me, you know, uh, she told me, you don't have to put on your panty, but just put your pad, and uh, it will hold. And I was like, okay, fine, I will do that. So we stayed there with my hubby waiting in my bed. I was given a bed uh, to to relax. I was mm-hmm. given a bed. I was told that's where you're going to sleep, and that's your space for now. So we stayed there with my husband. I was so tensed. He tried talking to me, sweet things. We were talking, sharing. And, you know, he's telling me, you know what, babe, after this, I'm going to be pregnant. Really, you know, uh-huh. he was trying to switch talk me. But my tension was... He's a keeper. He's a keeper, 100%. <laughs> 100%. So, hi, guys. I was so tensed. So, we stayed there. Uh, my gainer took more time and uh, the nurse came and told us, you know, you have to give our gainer, it's around 12 now, you're going to give our gainer one hour, when he when he is done, he will come to call you, you okay, will be okay, I said, okay, fine, so the way he delayed, the more he delayed, the more I was getting, it. I was becoming even more happy, 
Of course. Well, I was I wasn't going to say more happy, but I was going to say more tensed. You know, because the longer you wait, the more anxious you become and and stuff like that. But in your case, I can't imagine like, yes, maybe I will not undergo surgery today and you know, you were <laughs> you were happy. No, I wasn't getting I was like, oh, I would say I would be like more anxious. Like I was so scared. Mm -hmm. So we stayed and it was not time. I saw some we saw six men come and they were all in white apron mask and everything and they told us, uh, Pauline, now this is the time you're going to undergo the surgery, you'll be well, you'll be happy at the end of it all. No more pains for you, no more no more pains, no more heavy bleeding, so nothing. And mm -hmm. I was like, Thank you, God. So I told them Give me a few minutes, I have to go to the washroom and release myself. I said, okay. So as I went to the washroom, they went to prepare my... They went, uh, they went to the theater to prepare. So I just locked the door. I didn't even go to do anything. I just sat on the toilet and started thinking of the what, what will happen to me. What if I don't wake up? What oh, if I die? Right. What if I feel pain? Yeah, anxiety just, just you know, just came. Oh, my dear. Oh, it's terrible. I'm scared of this pain. I'm scared of what will, you know, things started coming in my mind. And now I just had a bang on the door. Like my husband was calling me, babe, babe, open the door, babe, babe. I'm like, I'm not even talking went me silently and I didn't want anything to move so that they, they don't know that I'm in the toilet. So I had the doctor ask, uh, where is she? And my husband said, she said she's going to the toilet, maybe let's check on her again. Do you know, it took almost 10 minutes for them waiting for me, waiting outside the toilet for me to come out. When they saw I'm not coming out, they had to open. They opened the door from outside, they had a key, so the, the nurse came with an extra key, opened the door and found me <laughs> just sit there. They were all laughing because it was it was crazy. I was so tensed, you know. But I was put in the middle of the doctors now. They escorted me, my husband, and now at that in that time, my husband decided to call my what do you call? We call them Wifi. Yeah, called one of our aunts. So he called one of, of the aunts and told her, you know, Pauline is undergoing surgery and this and this is happening and we're in this hospital. So the auntie got scared and she had to come where we were. So she came, uh, she saw me and she told me, wish you the best. They prayed for me and I went to the theater. But uh, when I got to the theater, I saw the place was so beautiful, it was so welcoming, so I got comfortable. Uh, so I was given the anesthesia and I was told to say the music that I would love to listen. But when I'm struggling to give the music, I just went off. <laughs> they did their thing and guys, I was told my surgery is just a two to three hour thing and I'm done. Do you know, I got to the theater table at 2.15, yes, 2.15. I left theater at 1, 1 a.m. Yes, what? 1 a.m. 1 a.m.? That was like more than six hours. It's young. She has been done. She has been operated. The surgery has gone well. I've been taken to the recovery room. And an hour later, I just find myself i hear myself some i hear some sound from far i just could hear some sound from far and as i could hear the sound from far i tried not to regain my conscious back and i started calling my husband like uh, babe, babe. <laughs> the nurse was taking care of me all right so i guess that was the end all right so um well I guess there is a part two. There must be a part two to this uh, to this video, and I'm going to watch it to the end because I'm curious to know how things went after that. But wow, such a courageous young woman, such a supportive husband, and yeah, I'm so um, 
mad respect honestly for this couple because they've come a long way so guys if you enjoyed you know the the, the lessons in this video if you enjoyed my reaction make sure you subscribe you know make sure to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend and so meet you you know in part two of the next video with Mokazi's family. So thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye, guys. Bye.